What's up everyone? It's Barry here from Power Apps Academy. Today we're going to be doing a video about the great if statement or function. Um, it's probably one of the most commonly used and uh, there's lots of use cases for your apps. So best you understand it and know how to use it. So we're going to cover the basics just so you can get your head around it and then obviously it can get more advanced uh, with different use cases but you need to understand how you can use it and I'm going to give you some examples today. And we're going to, um, we're going to build on a previous example where uh, we had a look at um, building a simple web uh, like a, a, a help desk or collection of information type form. You might want to collect some information, attach a spreadsheet. So we built that in the last tutorial. I'm going to take a video up here. If you want to you know, watch that, it might be useful. If you want to create forms and send data to different teams, that kind of thing. Um, so today we're going to build on that uh, using the if statement. Um, right, let's, let's just go to the screen. Uh, then I can just give you an idea of what we'll be doing. Just one second while I get over there. Right. Present screen. Hopefully, you can see my screen. Hi, everyone. I'm over here. There we go. Cool. Um, right. So this is where we got to last time. We had the simple screen. Um, it's nice. All my apps sort of have the same look and feel. They've got this header bar. Um, I think we covered it in the previous one. If you want to go back and watch that video, how we created that, and then we had this request field where you could type in a request. You could attach a file. And then hit the submit button and it would send it to a static email address and in this case I just clicked on the button over there and let's just have a look we sent it to so collect uh, collect the attachment send it to help at powerappify.com we basically just send the, what it was in um, in this box plus the attachment and just email it so you can see how you could build a form you know, you, people could request something, attach, upload something, and then send it to an email address. So in this one, we're going to um, provide a drop-down box with some target teams, and then depending on which one they select, that will uh, select the appropriate email address and send the email to that team's email address. So we're going to use a drop-down box with some if statements. Um, I'm also going to show you how we can use the if statement to maybe gray out the box until they've selected the right one. And um, yeah, so uh, let's get into it. Right. Okay, so what we're going to need is a drop down box. So we're in the default um, the studio over here. Um, and we are going to add in a drop down box. We're going to click on the insert here. Just uh, type in drop. Click on the drop down box. There we go. It's going to pop on in over there. So, this allows us to, the drop down box is really useful. It allows us to select from a number of different options. We can either put static values in there or we can quite easily just reference a SharePoint list, like a column in a SharePoint list. So, the values in there. Um, so, we can have a look at that in a different video. I'm not going to go into that. In this example, we are going to put some uh, static values in there. So, uh, I just click on there and in items, so the items property of the drop down box, we're just going to, um, this is just, just learn this, there's two square brackets and then in there you just put your options in double quotes with it separated by commas, okay, so how many are you going to put in there. So we're going to, on the first one, we're going to put um, select a team, so that's going to be our default option there, and then we're going to have HR, and we're going to have IT, and one more let's call it legal so we um we we want to allow them to select a request from those three teams obviously you can have a lot more whatever teams suit you in there um that is let's just check uh, we can if we hold an alt and we click on the down button you can see we've got our four options that we've put in there so that's what we want uh, next, um, so what we're going to do is just add a button for now, just uh, to help us build our code, and we'll move that code um, somewhere else afterwards. But we're just going to add a button. So we're just going to put our button over there to build our our if statement out. Right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on there, and we're going to go on select. So on select means when you click on the button. Uh, you want to execute some code. So that's where we're going to put our if statement in. By the way, guys, there's um, 
you know, the Microsoft documentation. If you want to learn, uh, it's always got a description and the syntax of if statements with loads of examples. So you can always um, also refer back to that if you need to at any time. So we've got our button in here. We're going to do on select and we're going to start off with if. Okay, great if if statement and the if statement always has a um, bracket right and then um, uh, you can just carry on writing but I like to put some uh, some uh, some formatting in there so uh, just to make it easier oh before we carry on here sorry I, I should have done this previously let's just rename this um, to uh, drop underscore um, uh, let's just call it for team okay drop for team so that's our drop box just so we know we're going to click back on the button here okay we go back to our if statement so so we're going if now that it says it shows you here the, the syntax so if the, what's the logical test what's the test of your if statement so we're going to go if um, if the drop drop box if the drop down box so the drop for team um uh, dot selected so whatever the selected uh, value is selected okay dot value oh gosh sorry right. if the if the drop uh for team the selected value in there uh is equal to the first one there select um a team right then now you can see what what happened what does it do if it's true right uh, if it's true we want to uh, hopefully you guys understand a little bit about variables if not don't worry um, you can look it up we're basically just setting a variable which is just a variable is just um, so, uh, uh, a value that's assigned to something right so um, we're gonna I always started off calling a variable var underscore uh, and we're going to call this destination uh, email destination email um, okay so that's the variable and whatever we want to set it to we put a comma and then we put a value so uh, there's a there's a um, like a function called blank okay so if I click on blank you'll see it'll put some brackets afterwards so I'll explain this uh, as as we go along. It'll make a little bit more sense. Uh, so it might be a little bit confusing. So um, so if the drop down box selected value is so is this value select a team, then set my variable which is called var destination email set it to blank right because there's no email assigned to it. So that's uh, why we're setting it to blank. Right now I've put a comma. Now I could have an else value right. An else value would be the so if it's this, then set it to this. Else, if it's not that, set it to some other value. Right, but I'm going to keep this rolling, so I'm just going to um, put another one in there. So if my drop underscore four team drop down box dot selected dot value. Don't worry if this doesn't make sense just yet. Right, we'll talk through it again once we've created it. So if the value is equal to uh, HR, which was my other one, um, then what do we want to set our variable to? Oh, that's right, our HR email address, right? So our variable is going to be the same, right? A variable uh, value can be updated at any time. So set destination unknown uh, destination email to um, HR at your company email address.com. Uh, I think that's right. All right, comma. Uh, is that right? If da -da -da -da, set. Ah, okay. These have to be in double quotes, right? Because it's a string. It's an email address, right? So there we go. Right, next, we're going to have another one. So if the drop down for team dot selected dot uh, value uh, is equal to it, I think 
Uh, then we can set our variable. I'm just going to copy this because it's going to be exactly the same every time. Control C, Control V. So we want to call it IT and your company.com. I'm just going to copy the exactly the same thing. Control C, Control V. Uh, what was the last one? Legal. Okay. So the, if the value is equal to legal, then send it to legal at your company.com. All right. And then else, I'm going to have an else. So if it, if it, if it equals one of those, then it's going to set that variable to whatever that email address is. But if it's not equal to any of those, then there's going to be, um, uh, there's going to be another, like a default value, right? Which is, I'm going to use the notify. I don't know if you've used it before. So notify basically pops up a little message on your screen, uh, nicely formatted, um, and I'll show you how it looks. So we're going to go notify. So if we're going to have a little message, you are unsure which team to use call phone number 888, whatever number you want to call, just put some any number in there right and we this uh, notify it has its own values um, notify what have I done wrong um, so notify ah oh, close the yeah if I close this bracket right it ends the notify bit of the function you can see notify has its own syntax so uh, you leave it open keep the the comma it's gone, okay, what type of notification type do you want? We want um, notification information, right? And we want timeout of, say, 10,000 milliseconds. It's 10 seconds. Okay, now I can close the bracket, right? Um, and I can close the whole if statement. Okay, it's going to close the if statement. Okay, so... Let's just format this. It can format it much better than I can. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so we've got if the drop down box is set to select a team, then set my variable to blank. Same for this if the drop down. So you can see the if statement just rolls, rolls on, right? If this, if this. Now I'm not saying if this, then that, right? I could do that, but if I keep going if this, then if this, then set this, if this, then set this, if this, then set this, and it only uses the else when I've got no more to come, right? It's the last value in there, okay? Right, so there's our if statement. Um, I think we're gonna need one more uh, value in there, aren't we? Um, because, uh, like, Otherwise, we're never going to use that notify because there's, they they are always going to select one of these, right? Um, which they have a value for it, the email address. So let's add in on there. Let's add in one that's called not sure. Not sure, not sure. Cool. All right. So we've got not sure in there. Yeah, not sure. Cool. So um, if I click this button. It is going to. All right, let's let's we want to we want to see what happens, right? So we, we we created that variable. We can simply print a variable on, on the screen. It's quite easy. We're just going to add in a um, a um, a label, so a text label in there. It's in black writing by default, so I'm just going to change it into white. There we go. And we want to put it in brackets. So, uh, right. So we could just put the variable right here. The variable uh, destination. Oh, what's happening there? That's weird. Did I have a spelling? Sorry, I'm. It sounds like I had a spelling mistake somewhere in there. Ah, oh, there we. Go. Oh gosh. Okay. 
You can see if you get something weird like that, I'd put two variable names. You can see it gave me two when it does the sort of default lookup. So I'm just going to replace these because we only want one variable called destination email. Um, so basically, this just updates that variable to whatever that email address is, depending on what they've selected. That's what it does. Okay. And we want to go back here, var destination email. So whatever. Um, yeah, so whatever the value of that is, is always going to show up here. So let's just click the button and see what happens. So if I, I always can click on Alt, you can see nothing happens in there because it's blank. Remember, if it's on select a team, then it sets it to blank, which is just blank is nothing. Okay, so now let's select one of the other ones, so HR. I'm going to click on the button. There we go. So now it's selected HR, and if I click on legal, click out legal at your company, right? So that's what we want. We want to be able to send an email um, to whichever one they select in there. And then let's try the last one, which is, they select not sure. Let's just minimize this. Click on the button. Cool, there's our little nice little message which will come up in the app, and it'll be nice if I get my spelling right. Okay, so that's a nice little if statement in there. Um, that's cool. And then we also, on our submit button, um, let's just click on that. I think we had hard coded, yeah, we'd hard coded the email address. So we don't want to, and if you want to you know, find out how this works, go back and check that video out that I linked earlier. Um, we don't want to have a static uh, string as an email address. So a string is in double quotes, right? So. Um, that just sort of types out the whole email address. We want, only want the variable. Now, when we have a variable, we don't need the double quotes. Let's just put the variable in. And we've got the variable. Should come up. Destination email. Cool. Now, it's going to send the email. See the two? That's on the two. So, you send the send email function. Then it's got you know, the, the, des the two email address. Instead of that being a string, a static email address, it's going to be a variable. So, whatever... The uh, email address is assigned to it. That's where the email address that email address is going to be uh, used as the to person for the email. Right, cool. So that's good. And, and by the way, you know, if you didn't want this to be visible, we're only showing it there because it's nice to see um, for troubleshooting. We could always click on the visible and set that to false, and that will hide that. Okay. Right. What else do we need to do? Um, so we've got that. I think another nice thing would be, right, if it's if if it's on, say, select a team, we wouldn't want them to be able to click on submit because they haven't selected anything and it would fail anyway. So we'd want to gray this out. And this is another use case for an if statement, right? So we can just go down here to, um, I use this quite a lot as well, display mode. Uh, display mode for anything is considered to edit, which allows people to click on it. View is just to view the value, and then disable just disables it, right? So those those three options with it. So we could say um, in here, we could have another if statement, so we can just delete that. We can go if, remember, op always open brackets. So if um, this drop down, so drop, stop it in, drop four team, remember, dot selected, just stick with the old, Selected dot value. So if the value of that drop down, the selected value of that drop down list is equal to select a team. And remember, any string that isn't like a built in function or a variable must go into double quotes. And make sure your spelling's right as well. If uh, the value, selected value equals select a team. Then, so once I've got the logical test, that it is, that's what it's testing, if that is equal to that, then, comma, what's, what's the result, right? The true value, so if it is equal to select a team, then we want that disabled, um, uh, what do we, display mode, just, just I'll type it out, give you the options. Again, spelling, display mode dot disabled, so, you know, if it's got selected team, we want that to be disabled, right? Because we don't want them to progress because there's no email assigned. Uh, else, else, remember in the, in the last one we did quite a few if statements. This is just if this, that, uh, else, do this. 
So if it's select a team, then set it to display mode, or if it's anything else, then select a display mode uh, edit. Okay, cool. Now I can see when they launch the form, this will be the default value, select a team. They won't be able to submit it because it won't have an email address assigned, right? And you could even, you know, you could even gray these out so that, you know, only once they selected, then they can start typing, yeah, exactly the same. Uh, you can use the um, display mode for these with exactly the same if statement, okay? Or you could even set it to the, whatever the display mode value is in here, um, in the display mode value there. So there's a few ways of doing it. Um, let me just show you that. So uh, instead of having to type it out all again, we could just go... Uh, display mode, display mode, if we can find it, display mode, we could actually set this display mode to the value of, oh, where is that one, button one, so display mode, we can set it to, I think it's button, button one, dot display mode, okay, there we go, you can see that's also grayed out. Now if I select a bow, if I select a value, they'll both become, there we go, now it's become enabled. Okay, so you can do it that, or you could just put the if statement in both places. It's easier if you just put like a master one, and then you sort of just build all other values pointing to this, because sometimes if you need to make changes, you don't have to go into each one and make the same change. You just go, this is my master cell. Whatever I do here, if there's a value that's going to filter out to all the other ones, then, you know, just just make them equal the, whatever the value is here. That uh, tends to be a good way of doing things. Okay, cool. But now we've got this odd button here. We don't really want to have that. We just want to have our submit button down here. So what are we going to do? All right, we do some quite simply. We want to take the code, our if statement on here. We know that works well. Tested it. We're going to copy it, right? And then we're going to click on here. And then there's something called um, up on update on change sorry on change there we go so when the value of this changes then run whatever code is in here which we're just going to paste our if statement in there i think that's going to work let's check it out so yeah so our if statement's now on on there we can hide this button and just pretend it's not there for now um, push play so let's just see what happens select a team there we go it's grayed out so that's working HR, oh, actually, let's just unhide our label so we can see what's going on. Visible, true. Just remember, true, false is Boolean. It's just true or false. There's only two values it can have. Okay, so now we want to see it in action. So IT, HR, there we go. Legal, yeah, that's working 100%. Yay, there's our box that'll disappear after 10 seconds remember you said that right okay fantastic so um right we've done that simple if statement there they can get very com complex you know if you get into a lot of details and you sort of nesting functions within if statements but we're not going to go into that here keep it nice and simple just so you get the grips get to grips of the if statement go ahead build this up yourself practice it um because once it clicks, it clicks, and then you can start building it out. It's, it's all about you know, understanding where the brackets go, and you know, it gives you the syntax of the different functions. You just build them out within each other, you know, and just um, you know, the nesting can get a bit complex later on, but you know, just, just get to grips with the basics of ifs um, if you aren't already. So hopefully you guys found that useful. Um, you know, please join our Facebook group. Um, uh, let me just go back to my uh, team my page quickly. Please join our Facebook group up there somewhere. And um, if you need Power Apps templates, we've got loads of business ready templates down here. PowerAppify.com, check that out. And please subscribe, like our YouTube channel, please. It really helps us. Building up our subscribers um, on our way to a thousand. So um, much appreciated. If you guys can join up and then smash up the like buttons, that really helps us as well. It gets our videos out there. So appreciate the time, guys. Um, hit us up in the comments if you want any uh, us to focus on anything else in upcoming videos. Otherwise, have a great week, and we'll catch up with you soon. Cheers, then. Bye.